New at 11, taking on bots who could be taking kids' tests. How Denver Public Schools is trying to combat the rise of a smart AI chat program. Plus, a showdown over the future of the Colorado River. What happens if regional states can't reach consensus by tomorrow? And it's just really easy, and our, our bills are quite a bit lower, too. With plunging temps come soaring costs. Can a heat pump cut it in this cold? We're looking at incentives to sign up for the alternative. But of course, we have to begin today with just how cold it is. Thanks so much for joining us on this Denver 7 Weather Action Day. I'm Jason Grenauer. This is a live look from the top of Lookout Mountain. Clear, crisp, cold, bitterly cold. A wind chill advisory was just lifted, but you really couldn't tell. You step outside, whether it's 4 or 2 or 0, it is just downright cold. So let's kick things off with meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo. Lisa, we started the day by tying a record low temp. Yeah, just after 2 a.m., 10 degrees below zero, tied the record low, and we haven't moved much since then. Right now, three degrees below zero feels like about 15 to 20 below. We get a little mix of sun and clouds out there, but there has been some snow in spots. I'll show you that in just a minute. Take a look at some of these wind chills, though, and with this storm, coldest conditions we're going to see are going to be over the eastern half of the state versus what's a lot warmer out west right now. Uh, all that cold air sinking in and backing in along the front range this weekend and it's staying put through the first of the week. Take a look at this band of snow that's been rolling in from the west right over I-25. Areas like Loveland, Longmont, Johnstown, Greeley, picking up a few inches of snow here this morning. It's finally starting to break up a bit, but it did bring some pretty good snow to some of the roadways up north. We are expecting to get above zero here through early afternoon. Some neighborhoods are already there. Highs are going to be at right around 10 degrees later today. That's cold. That will be it for the high today. From there, we're going to start to drop as we get closer to sunset. 5 to about 6 o'clock, back down to near 7, near 5 degrees, and then cold again overnight tonight. Coming up, there is a warm-up this week. Things are going to thaw out. We have a nice stretch of 40s, Jason. I'll show you when coming up. I can't wait, Lisa. Thank you. Now, here's a testament to just how cold it is. I myself woke up to frozen pipes this morning. Can't wait to figure that out. Well, we're betting there are plenty more people out there in a similar situation right now. So we sent Denver 7's Brandon Richard out to talk with plumbers about what to do if you found frozen pipes this morning or later today if you find them after work. Yeah, Jason, I can tell you it is cold right now, bitterly cold, and unfortunately it's going to remain cold all day long. Of course, these cold temperatures can cause you a lot of frustration and money should the worst happen and a pipe inside your home freezes and bursts. Unfortunately, you know what that's like. Now, we spoke with John Hicks with Brothers Plumbing this morning. He says that if your pipes haven't already frozen from the cold temperatures that we have seen overnight and this morning, then chances are they won't. But if you're still worried, he says one easy thing that you can do something that you're hopefully already doing is keeping your home warm. He says that the warmer temperature will help prevent indoor pipes from freezing. He says if you can and haven't already have your furnace checked. You know, when temperatures get this cold, furnaces are running nonstop 24 seven. He says if your heat does go out or if you're just worried about your pipes freezing, there are some other preventative measures that you can take to save yourself from a costly repair, which could cost hundreds, even thousands of dollars. But if the wind does pick up and um, so forth and you start getting infiltration, then some of those cold spots uh, where it is infiltrating, you could have some freezing pipes inside of the homes um, and opening cabinets and cupboards and things like that where those pipes are existing that you've had maybe problems with before um, to keep those nice and, and warm. And John also emphasizes the importance of regular maintenance. He says that can really save people a lot of frustration this time of year, not to mention save them a lot of money. We're live in Denver. Brandon Richard, Denver 7. Brandon, thank you. And I just looked up one more tip. Make sure if your pipes do freeze to thaw them out slowly to try to prevent them from bursting. That's what I get to do at home right after this newscast. Well, most homes in Denver are heated with natural gas, and we've been telling you for weeks about people's bills doubling or tripling because of high natural gas prices and because of how cold it has been this winter. And as you might expect, people are now looking for alternatives, and that includes heat pumps. Now, they work like a reverse 
reverse air conditioner, soaking up natural heat from outside even when it's cold, then releasing it into your house at an even higher temperature. They are fully electric and modern ones can heat a home even when temperatures fall below zero. But they can be expensive. Dan Esposito says it would have cost him around $21,000, but a rebate from Excel and the city of Denver brought his cost down to about $13,000 your energy bill going down is really big. So if you can finance the, the after rebate cost um, and maybe secure a lower rate there, then the savings on your month to month energy bill might make things pencil out for you. Now the city thinks there will be even more interest in heat pumps this year because of the Inflation Reduction Act, which provides federal tax credits for the same equipment. Those federal rebates should be available a little bit later on this year. Now, even in these frigid temperatures, volunteers will go out tonight and count how many people are experiencing homelessness in the Denver Metro. Organizers say the weather will impact the results of the annual point in time count by skewing the number of people considered sheltered versus unsheltered. However, officials say that the total number should still be accurate. Well, new this hour, a Denver rec center reopened this morning for the first time in weeks after being used as an emergency shelter for migrants. The Rude Rec Center is in the Sun Valley neighborhood. The city says it has helped shelter more than 42 migrants since early December. Right now, just a few dozen are housed in another emergency shelter also run by the city. Now we're keeping tabs on the cold's impact out at the airport as well. About 10% of planned flights out of DIA were canceled today. And I checked flight aware DIA number two on their misery map. The total numbers 100 flights have been canceled. 186 are delayed. A majority of those cancellations are from Southwest and SkyWest. Well, from the skies to the streets, Colorado is number one in the country for auto theft. But today, a state senator will unveil new legislation to try to help curb auto theft. Under current law, if a stolen vehicle's value was under $2,000, it's considered a misdemeanor. Boulder County DA Michael Doherty and the Colorado Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice want all auto theft to be treated as a felony, regardless of a vehicle's value. Because that data shows that roughly 40% uh, of the individuals currently being prosecuted for auto theft are receiving probation sentences, and roughly 20% or less are actually going to state prison currently. Now, Governor Polis told the Commission on Criminal and Juvenile Justice that he wants Colorado to be one of the 10 safest states over the next five years. And the statistics show just how bad something needs to be done here. The Metropolitan Auto Theft Task Force says auto theft was up another 11% in 2022. On average, 84 vehicles were stolen every day in the metro last year. Officials do have good news, though. They do say 77% of stolen vehicle, vehicles are eventually recovered. So how do you protect yourself from becoming one of those statistics? Well, there's steering wheel locks, hidden kill switches, alarms and trackers. But experts say if those devices don't work, you need to have insurance. These are people that are dangerous criminals in many cases that are using these vehicles for drug crimes, violent crimes. When you get a car back, many times that vehicle is damaged. It's a total loss. It has drug paraphernalia in it or has been used in a violent crime. Yeah, that happened to a friend of mine, in fact. So even if you get it back, your car may be too costly to fix. That's why you need comprehensive insurance. It is optional in Colorado, but it covers things like theft, hail, fires, and other problems. All right, let's take a look now at some of the other top national stories as we're kicking off this week. Prepare your budget for another interest rate increase. The Federal Reserve is meeting tomorrow and Wednesday. Economists are predicting a rate increase of a quarter of a percent. Many experts think this meeting will also telegraph fewer future rate hikes for later on this year. On Wednesday, Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy will meet with President Joe Biden to work on the debt ceiling. McCarthy says he wants spending cuts along with raising the debt limit. But the White House has ruled out pairing those two things together as the government tries to avoid a potentially devastating financial default. The Speaker is pledging that cuts to Social Security and Medicare will be off the table.
And there's an important deadline tomorrow for the future of the Colorado River. The seven states along the river basin failed to come up with a unified plan over the summer to reduce water use by at least 2 million acre feet per year. Now that's an enormous amount of water, a million Olympic sized swimming pools. If the group of states and tribal nations can't figure things out by tomorrow, it increases the chances that the Bureau of Reclamation will just make decisions for them and impose strict new usage rules. We, of course, will keep you posted. Still to come, how Colorado's largest public school district is planning to deal with the rise of a powerful artificial intelligence some people are using to pass law exams and prepare speeches for Congress. We'll explain. And don't make a scammer your valentine this year. The signs, they're looking to rob you instead of romance. That's next.